Hello everyone, welcome to Jira Workflow course, build advanced Jira workflows for your projects from Software Testing Mentor and RCV Academy. This is your instructor Manish and in this course we'll be learning all about the Jira workflows and advanced workflows, how you can create your own workflows within Jira as per the project needs and customize the existing workflows. Now if you are already using Jira, you would know that each project has the underlying workflow that is tied up to the project that your project issues follow from start to finish. Now many projects do not fit into the default workflow that is provided within Jira and you might need to create a custom workflow. So what do you need to do in order to create custom workflow? So all of that advanced concept how to customize your existing workflow, how to create a new custom workflow will be covered in this particular course. So we'll start from very basic of the workflow. So basically how to create a workflow from scratch and then we'll move forward. So for example, we'll understand the common issues that can happen within the workflow. What are the workflow triggers, the conditions, the validators and the post function. So what all these concepts are in Jira and how you can configure it. So configuration along with the understanding is also very important because unless you know how to configure the theory won't help you to actually implement it in your project. So we'll do a hands on exercise, understand these concepts and do a hands on workflow and create a workflow with all these validators, triggers, conditions and post fun functions. Then we'll understand about the workflow scheme. Then we'll associate the workflow with the workflow scheme. We'll create a Jira board and then we'll map the workflow status in Jira, right? So we'll, we'll configure Jira board and then whatever new workflow you have created, we'll map that workflow with the board so that when you apply that workflow to your project, you can see those issues or the status is being mapped to the board and the issues are listed on the board. Then we'll test the post function and then we'll also have a lecture on how to create a workflow step by step. So that will be a sort of complete end to end workflow tutorial or the video to help you understand whatever we have covered in this particular course. So this course is a must watch for you and get yourself into the advanced concept of the workflow because if you're part of the development team and playing any role within the team, Jira is so widely used in IT organizations that you need to understand not only how to use it, but if you know how internally or what all advanced details are there within Jira, especially with the workflows, you will be sort of a person who will be a go-to person to explain many things. So this series will help you to understand those advanced concepts and really build your expertise around Jira workflow. So just go ahead, enroll and I'll see you in the class. Happy learning. Thank you. Hello guys, welcome to Jira workflow tutorial. In this tutorial series, I'll deep dive into the Jira workflow and we'll start creating Jira workflow from scratch and then understand all the details in the Jira workflow and how you can utilize the Jira workflow customization as per the needs in your project. So let's get started. So I'm here uh, logged in as the Jira administrator and what I'll do is I'll go back to the Jira admin uh, section, uh, click on the right cogwheel and click on issues. Now it will ask you to re-enter the password, admin password and here I am in the issued section of the administration and below that you will see the workflows. Now what exactly is a workflow in Jira? So in uh, a Jira uh, is a sort of a tool or um, agile uh, software development tool wherein you can manage your different agile development uh, methodologies like Scrum, Kanban, etc. Now, all the issues in Jira or any, um, it's sort of a, any project in Jira is a collection of issues. And then how those issues are transitioning from one state to another or from start to finish is basically determined by the workflow. And workflow is underlining um, sort of uh, flow that is followed by each of the issue within Jira. 
and there are some default issue types and then there you can also create the custom issue types and custom workflows as per the need for the uh, project now if we see the workflows um, in the jira and i'll give you a brief about how the workflow will look like so this is the workflow that uh, i created recently if you just click on view um, this workflow it will give you a detail what exactly the workflow looks like right so you have certain states statuses and then you have some transitions so like for example from open to resolved is a resolve issue transition then these are the states statuses right um, if you click on edit this particular workflow you will see that you will be able to add a new statuses and then add a transition or show the transition label so these are the labels that are the transition labels now this is how the workflow looks like now to create a workflow from scratch is um, possible through the workflow section if you're logged in into the jira administration portal and if you click on add workflow you can provide the name here so i'll say cv jira workflow tutorial and just to save the time i'll put the same in description and click on add now you can see it will create a blank canvas uh, for you with just an open state to create a workflow right now depending on what exactly you're looking for in your workflow or how the issue might transition in your uh, project you will come up with the statuses and the transitions that are allowed from a particular status to the next status so for this tutorial what i'll do is i'll create a simple workflow the software development workflow with certain states so for example open and then uh, in progress or in development then in testing um, so there will be a couple of statuses so let's add a couple of statuses there so uh, what i'll do is i'll add a new status there in development and these statuses will basically um, need to be categorized into three main categories in Jira so to do in progress and done so in in development if something is picked or some story is in development that means it's in progress we'll change that and create that right so we have created a new status which is in development now there is no transition at the moment so that's why you see this these red dots now we'll add another uh, status so once the development has been finished we'll say it moved to in testing and once the testing has been done uh, it will be closed or done state right so the story will be moved to done state and <clears throat> now here you can see that i have four different states here right and then what we need to do is we need to add the transition so basically there is no transition so that means you won't be able to move from one state to another so we have to add the transition from open to in development and then just give the name of the transition right so click on add and now you can see that the issue there is a transition link from open to in development and this arrow is just one sided arrow that means you can move a transition you can move an issue from open to in development but not from in development back to open if you want to do that you have to add another transition and say from in development to open and then you can say name as open and it will allow you to move issue from open to in development and then from in development back to open now there is another thing to notice here in uh, workflows is if you click on add transition and sorry if you click on um, any of the um, statuses and click on allow sta all status to transition to this one that means it doesn't matter which status a particular issue is it will be able to directly transition from open to in testing or in development to testing or done to testing right so usually um, that is if you're using software simplified workflow that is okay but uh, most of the time it's not uh, what the project needs are it will be mostly 
um, the statuses or the transition between the statuses will be sort of uh, really uh, controlled in a way that which issues can transition from what status to what status so we'll add another transition and finalize this work workflows from in development to in testing and just say testing and again from in testing to done I'll say complete as the name right so that's a simple very simple workflow and what this workflow states is that you can move from open to in development and from in development back to open um, and then you can also move from in development to testing but you can't move from uh, back from testing to in development and then from testing you can move to complete now what will happen in this sort of scenario is that if your issue is in testing at the moment then you can't move it back you can only move it to done state and then once it is done you can't even reopen the issue because there is no transition back to open so it's good idea to add a status as reopen because there might be possibility when your testing fails and you might be required to reopen in an issue right or even from the done state you might be required to reopen an issue and then add a transition from testing to reopen right so if you simply the other way to add a transition if you sim simply uh, click on a status and then drag and drop the arrow to the state then it will automatically um, add the transition you can say just testing failed and in that case the issue will be reopened right you can see this transition coming here then from done it's up to you if you want to add but from testing you can reopen and then from reopen um, you can just keep it in reopen or you can you know like again move it back to open so that's totally up to you so this workflow all these requirements in, uh, in the workflow come from the project and uh, the people working in the project so you will get a complete detailed requirement how you have to structure um, your workflow or how you have to create your workflow and what all transitions need to be there in the workflow right so it's not that you will be um, just uh, alone all alone defining the workflow it will be completely uh, based on the system uh, or the uh, project needs and uh, the stakeholders how they need to uh, define this particular workflow so that's pretty much all about for this tutorial um, we'll dig more deeper into the workflows in the next tutorial thank you for watching hello and welcome to jira workflow tutorial and in this tutorial we'll go through a bit in detail about the workflow that i created in the last tutorial and see what all issues might happen in this workflow now if you see this particular workflow you have certain statuses and then there are certain transitions so as you can see that i can move issues from open to in development from in development to testing from testing to complete or reopen but once the issue is in reopen it cannot transition from reopen to anywhere else right because there is no transition from reopen to either in development or to done so we need to fix that and to fix that what we'll do is we'll just um, do a bit of uh, clean up here and all right i will just move it like this now from reopen so once the issue has been you know like um, development complete and then the issue is moved to testing um, and the testers are doing the testing and if testing gets passed then they just move it to complete or to review depending on what uh, if you want to have another status there uh, as per your project requirement or if testing failed they might reopen the issue now from reopening once the issue has been reopened it needs to be picked back to the development right so we need to have a transition from reopen to the development as well so let's add that particular transition as well all right so 
from reopen to I'll say back to development and just add right so now you can see that once the issue has been open then it can be pulled into the development then from development developer once developer is done with the development work he can push it to testing if testing passes the issue gets done if testing fails then the issue gets reopened now from done there is nothing no um, transition at all so once the issue isn't done you cannot move it back so the the best thing is to have the bi-directional transition um, uh, but it depends you know like whether you need a uh, bi-directional transition or if, if uh, you do not or your project stakeholders do not want people to move the issues back to uh, any other state if the issue has been marked as done uh, but if you are having a bi-directional transition it gives you a bit of flexibility to um, you know move the issues around uh, different states so I'll what I'll do is I'll um, just add you know uh, the bi-directional uh, transitions uh, in all these scenarios so what I'll do is I'll just quickly add a transition from in testing to in development as well and then say back to development just in case there is um, a possibility that uh, the developer has marked the story as done or uh, completed and moved to in testing but when tester uh, started uh, testing the sanity itself failed and he has to move it back to the development so this, this transition will allow you to do, do that uh, once the testing has start then started then it can be you know like reopened and if you want you can have a transition from reopen to in testing as well and then similarly from done to in testing so this is um, you know like the very basic workflow that we have created which we'll use in the further upcoming tutorial now to understand a bit more uh, stuff on this if you click on um, this checkbox it will show you all the transition labels and then if you click on add transition then there is an option here of the screen which is basically the transition screen right so if you define any transition screens in the um, screen section then you can select those screens and those screens will appear once the issue is moved from one status to another status right we'll cover that transition screen uh, screens as well as part of this tutorial now the second thing is reuse a transition so for example um, you can reuse an existing transition so for example from status done to in testing if you if i want to um, have an existing transaction to reuse i can just say add a existing transition and then i have this bi-directional transition available here right so i can move a, a issue from in testing to done as well as backwards from done to in testing because now i have the bi-directional uh, transition available um, similarly here we can add transition from um, reopen to back in testing so which gives us a flexibility or maybe we'll just reuse uh, so reopen to in testing and then just use the same transition to in testing right so this transition in testing is being used everywhere so any uh, from any state you can move it back to um, in testing so that pretty much uh, completes the uh, the workflow or the sample workflow that we'll be working with and in the next tutorial we'll um, start with some of the advanced concepts of the workflow hope you like the video please do share and subscribe thank you for watching hello and welcome to jira workflow tutorial in this tutorial we'll see about the jira uh, workflow triggers so i am into the uh, sample workflow that we created and which is in the inactive state at the moment so let's see some of the transitions here so if we click on any of the transition in the workflow you will see all the options that are available for that particular transition and then you can edit or delete transition from here then um, you have certain options here like properties triggers conditions validators post functions and then you have link to 
go to the docs.atlassian, right? So now let's see what exactly are triggers in um, the workflow. Now, if you click on this link triggers, it will um, redirect you to the um, triggers section of this workflow, or you can simply go to the text mode of the workflow and then select any of the um, sort of uh, transition and it will directly uh, take you to the same page right so at the moment I'm in the transition in development from open to in development and for which um, I can set up the trigger right now this add trigger button will be available only if you have integrated your development tools like like uh, Bitbucket, GitHub, uh, etc. to your Jira instance. Since I have already configured that, I'm able to get this add trigger uh, button here. If you want more details, I'll um, go through this read um, workflow, uh, workflow trigger guide. And if you open the latest one, you will see all the options here about uh, before you begin. So you, you need to have the configuration or integration with Bitbucket server, Fisheye Crucible, GitHub, Bitbucket or GitHub. Now, once you have uh, this integration in place, then the second step is basically to setting up the triggers, which we'll cover in this tutorial, right? Now, if you see this um, trigger here, so you can simply to add a trigger, you click on add trigger and then you have certain options here, right? So you whenever a developer uh, creates a pull request or a pull request got merged so there are certain options or certain um, uh, different uh, triggers that could be uh, available and what exactly it does is as soon as this action happens then um, the issue will be transitioned from one state to another so you can set that up so uh, set that automatic transitioning of the issues with these triggers so for example if a developer uh, creates a branch right so he doesn't have to you know manually move a issue from to do to in progress if he he, uh, he has already created a branch through the issue uh, if the issue automatically gets transitioned from to do in progress that's of a big help so we'll say branch created and then click on next and then um, you know what what sources so this is my um, uh, bitbucket uh, uh, sort of integration uh, branch and then if I just click on um, add trigger then the trigger got added so what what it uh, does is as soon as the branch is created in that particular issue uh, what it will do is it will automatically transition the issue when a related branch is created in the connected rep uh, repository right and it will transition a issue from open to in development right because we have added a trigger for um, for this transition all right so that's basically what a trigger will will do so there are multiple um, options here uh, that you can add triggers so for example if a pull request is created or pull request merged you can um, do a separate trigger or you can do automatic updation of the issue uh, now the other thing to notice in triggers is that you have many other options uh, like pull request created pull request declined commit created pull request merged so you can utilize so for example pull request merged as soon as the pull request gets merged into the master branch then you can transition an issue from um, in review to done automatically so in that case it reduces the overhead of the developer to update the Jira um, and um, as soon as he's done with the, um, you know, like pull request merge, etc. Similarly, if it is, um, uh, say for example, pull request created, um, you can transition an issue from in development to in review. So there are many, um, you know, like customizations and triggers available uh, with the development tool in um, Jira software. So hope you liked the video. Um, please do share and subscribe and thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to Jira workflow tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the conditions or the Jira workflow conditions. 
So Jira workflow condition, if you want to edit the Jira workflow condition, click on any of the transition and it will give you a list of options here. So properties, triggers, triggers we discussed in the last tutorial. Conditions is what we are going to discuss now. So either you do this way or you go into the text mode and in the text mode you can select a transition and then set up the conditions for the um, transitions. Now let me move to the text mode and in the text mode say for example I want certain conditions to be fulfilled before an issue is transitioned from one state to another state so for example from open to interesting right now uh, let's let's choose a transition in testing and then we'll update the condition so now I'm in the transition in testing and there are multiple uh, statuses that are using the transition in testing so from in development you can move to in testing from done you can move to in testing and from reopened you can move to in testing now what con what a condition is so at the moment you can see there are no conditions specified now you can click on add condition and then we'll walk through what all conditions are available in Jira by default so you can see that block transition until approval right so what this conditions does is it says condition to block issue transition if there is a pending approval so for example in your workflow you have an approval um, uh, status as well and until that approval is done then you want to block the transition then you can select that particular uh, condition and similarly there are uh, say for example only assignee conditions or condition to allow only the assignee to execute a transition that means only a person who is assigned this particular issue will be able to transition from a particular status to another status or only a reporter condition so only a condition in which only a reporter of this particular issue will be able to execute the transition so these all are sort of conditions similarly you have the permission condition um, wherein you can set up only the users with certain permissions to execute this transition right uh, then you have users in group users in group custom field or users in a, is in a project role so group and project role are very common one wherein you want a person to be in a particular group to execute a transition from one state to another state and very common scenario is when uh, the developer uh, picks um, the story for development and then a story gets moved from development to testing it should be only with the person who is doing the development or is, in, is a member of the developer group so in those sort of scenarios it is very important to define these conditions what we'll do is i'll go back we'll um, go back to this workflow and we'll pick so from open to in development and then from in development to um, sort of I'll say this complete transition now that's basically I think we need to go back to the workflow and see what all transitions are available from in development to testing and see whether that's basically so from in development to in testing okay so what we need to do is basically we need to update this in testing um, transition condition to say that only developer or person who is in the development group will be transitioning an issue from in development to in testing but the problem with that would be because this transition in testing is shared by other uh, statuses as well so that will block anyone uh, you know like moving uh, an issue from done to in testing and reopen to in testing as well so which means that we have to have either a different transition for from done to in testing but rest to all fine because once a issue has been um, moved from development to in testing it should be only the developer who can move the uh, the issue from in development to testing and similarly if I if an issue got failed or story got failed uh, testing has failed then a developer should be moving it back from reopen to in testing again after fixing that issue so we'll leave the done 
as is for now and then we'll add a condition for this transition so I'll add a condition saying that user is in group and then we'll say user is in group developer right so I'll say developers and then add that particular condition so now you can see only users in group developers can execute this transition so what this means is a transition from in development to in testing or this in testing transition can be performed only by the persons who are the members of the group developers right now we go back to the workflow again and just open the workflow and we'll edit a few things in this workflow to fix the done to in testing state so here what we have we have same uh, in testing transition from done to in testing so what we'll do is we'll see uh, from done we'll change that transition Or sorry we will delete it and we'll delete the intestine transition and then we'll add another transition from in testing to done and then we'll say just done and from done maybe we will add another transition to reopen just in case we'll say more work required right so now if you see this workflow so we have a, a status uh, or an issue will be in open state from the open state a issue will move automatically to in development as soon as the, the branch is created because we have added a trigger as we have seen in the previous tutorial and from development an issue can move to in testing and then from in testing back to development and once the testing failed it can be reopened and then from reopened to back to development or it, if it passes it can be moved to done and if it is from done it can be again moved to reopen or reopen there is a, another transition that I have added and um, say for example more work required and then uh, move to reopen so this is bit um, refined as per the condition so we'll go back to the condition uh, which was from development to in testing and see the condition again now you see the only users in group developers can execute this transition and since i have removed that transition from done to in testing now we only have a transition in testing from in development to in testing or reopen to in testing and which makes sense because only developers should be moving the issues from in development or reopen state to in testing state now the next thing to note here is that you have the option to add multiple conditions so if you click on add condition you can select multiple conditions from this list whatever you want to choose and then you can also have the option to select all of the following condition or any of the following condition so if you select any of the following condition that means as far as any of the conditions multiple conditions that you choose here are full, fulfilled if any one of that is fulfilled it will be um, moved to next day but uh, if you select all of the following condition that means a person has to be member of the developers group or if you choose another condition to um, so that uh, only reporter condition then a person has to be a reporter as well as to be a member of the developers group to transition an issue from development to testing so for example here only the reporter of the issue can execute this transition and only users in this group uh, developer can execute this transition so once both of them are fulfilled then the transition can happen from in development to testing or in testing transition can happen so that's all about conditions in jira workflow tutorial thank you for watching 
Hello and welcome to Jira workflow tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn about the Jira workflow validators. So in the in the past tutorials, we have seen about the Jira workflow conditions. Now we'll see the validators and the post functions in the next tutorial. So to go to the uh, Jira workflow, uh, we'll go to the admin section of Jira and then in the left hand side click on workflows and we'll open the workflow that we are working in this tutorial so rcv jira workflow tutorial and click on edit it now we are in the text mode at the moment let's go to the diagram mode and see the workflow and if you click on any of the transition here you will see the triggers conditions validator so we have covered triggers we have covered conditions now let's see what validators are so if i click on validators it will take me to the new window and the transition is currently um, in testing so which is which is in development reopened uh, uh, from status to in development and reopened uh, to move it to, into the in testing status now at the moment no input parameters checks will be done before this transition is executed so validators is basically uh, if you click on add validator it will take you to the um, different validator section or different validators that are available at the moment so zephyr uh, zephyr validator is the validator which has been introduced because i have in installed the zephyr uh, plugin which is the test management plugin for jira but uh, otherwise by default you have the permission validator and the user permission validator uh, but there are other um, add-ons that you can use to get more permission or, or more validator options here as well now if i say permission validator so what it does it it validates that the user has a permission to do something right so like in the condition we had added a condition that user must be a part of developers group to move an issue from um, in progress to testing because a person who is in development team will be working on the issue or on the user story to do the code and, and then move it to the testing now in the permission validator you can verify that the permission that the user has the right set of permission to move the issue so so um, let's um, let's add a permission validator and then what you need to you will get is you you will get the permission um, drop down which is basically what what permission you want to check for that particular um, permission validator so whether um, administer project or browse project or manage sprint so what all permissions are um, there uh, need to be there when a user you know you want uh, him to move an issue so for example issue permission so whether um, if only if a person is part of the development group and has this permission then you will allow um, the user to move a issue from particular uh, status to another status so now if here we choose another say you know we'll say edit or we'll say edit issue permission right or we'll say just say um, browse project permission just to keep it simple so that if a person has browse project permission then he should be able to transition an issue um, from in development or reopen state to in testing state right so if a person doesn't have browse permission for this particular project where you will be um, implementing this jira workflow then he won't be able to transition an issue and now please remember all these things work um, you know in sync so a condition has to be met as well as whatever you are setting in the validator has to be met uh, only then you will be able to transition an issue so in previous tutorial we have seen we have set up condition that um, a person needs to be in the group developers as well as only reporter of the issue can execute this transition so we'll remove this one we don't want to over complicate this we'll just say only users in group developers can execute a transition and then we'll add one validator which we have only users with browse project permissions can execute this transition 
Now as with conditions, you can add multiple conditions. Similarly with validators, you can add multiple validators as well. So if you go ahead and want to add multiple validators uh, from the list, you can choose other validators as well and add those. Now I won't add other validators. So that's pretty much all about the validators in Jira workflow tutorial. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to Jira workflow tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the Jira workflow post functions. So let's go to the Jira administration section. I'll go to the issues and then from issues, we'll go to the workflow section. So now in the workflow section, we have created a sample workflow. We'll scroll down to the inactive section and open the sample workflow that we have created already. Now, once we edit the workflow, we'll go to the diagram mode and in the diagram mode, select any of the transition. So we have already worked with the transition and added condition and validator. So in this tutorial, we'll see uh, what post functions are and then add some of the post function. Now we have done some condition validator for the transition in testing and the transition in testing from in development to in testing and from reopen to in testing right now post functions if you see there are already some post functions for um, this workflow and uh, at the moment you can see this there is no screen it will happen instantly so there there won't be any screen that will appear uh, once the transition happens now what post function is basically it's um, it will it, there are some um, post steps that happen so for example set issues status to the link uh, to the link status of the destination workflow step right now once an issue has been moved to the uh, next state right so these are all post functions so the status um, issue status will be linked as the workflow step status so that's the by default post function that is already available there and these are if you see these are all default post function that are already there that you can edit you know like some so the top four you can't even edit or delete right so these are all default that that are already there in jira but uh, the last one fire a generic event that can be processed by listener you can edit that but you can't delete that right um, now we'll add some other post function so we'll click on add post function and we'll see what other post functions are available so for example assign to current user or assign to lead developer assign to reporter right so these are some of the post functions that are available so for example an issue has been completed it has been tested and passed testing now once the issue has passed testing and it's moved to done there might be the the requirement to populate a particular field uh, which is a developer field that whosoever has done development gets automatically that field automatically gets populated uh, once the issue has been closed so those sort of scenarios are possible in the post function or say for example assign to lead developer once the issue has been completed or done you assign it to the lead developer right or when an uh, when an issue is say for example moved from uh, development to in review okay so so for example at the moment if you see our workflow we don't have anything any state status as in review but there are scenarios wherein you have in development and then in review or in code review and then once the code review is passed then it moves to the in testing phase so for example if the transition is in code review then what you can do is assign to the lead developer so as soon as that transition occurs automatically it, the issue gets assigned to lead developer so he is notified that yes there there is an issue which needs to be addressed or which i need to review or get reviewed by someone else similarly if for example um, i can add another post function in the same scenario once the issue has been moved from development to testing i can say um, assign 
or update an issue field okay so we can select that update an issue field and you can choose what all fields you need to update automatically right so for example you can choose the resolution automatically right so you can say uh, fixed right so once the issue is moved into testing from a development to testing you can automatically say the resolution field gets automatically changed to fixed right i won't change it here what i'll do is i'll add this post function for another transition so let me go back and we'll use this post function for done so from when an issue moves from in testing to done we'll say then update an issue field and we'll choose an issue field as a resolution and we'll say the resolution as uh, to be marked as done right so that will happen automatically as as soon as issues move from in testing to done then resolution will be set to done as well automatically right so that's um, pretty much all about the post functions in jira workflow hope you like the video thank you for watching hello and welcome to jira workflow tutorial in this tutorial i'm going to talk about the jira workflow scheme and then we'll create a new scheme and associate the workflow that we have created till now so let's go to the administration section and go to the issues and from issues we'll go to the workflow section now in last couple of tutorials we have covered all about creating a workflow from scratch and which is the rcv jira workflow um, tutorial is the name for that particular workflow and then we have understood what all um, you know triggers and conditions and validators and post functions about the workflow so this is our sample workflow that we created from scratch and then we have added the transition we have understood uh, a lot in detail about the transition and statuses and then we understood a lot about the triggers conditions validators post functions if you want to dig more detail you can click on this learn more uh, confluence document and it will redirect you to the uh, confluence documentation about the advanced jira workflow configuration and you can learn a lot more there now we have covered triggers conditions validators and post functions for this workflow but this workflow is not associated with any of the project till now that means this is still inactive and it's not um, part of any of the uh, issues or um, issue transition till now so what needs to be done is the next step in the workflow implementation is to create a workflow scheme and then associate this workflow with the workflow scheme so what we'll do is we'll click go to the workflow scheme and then click on workflow add workflow scheme and we'll see RCV uh, will give a similar name workflow tutorial scheme and to save time I'll copy and paste the same name there now our workflow scheme got created now if you see this workflow scheme there is a default Jira workflow in this workflow scheme already now we do not want this default jira workflow there so what we'll do is we'll say add a workflow and then add existing right and we'll add rcv jira workflow tutorial workflow that we created which is this one uh, that is displayed on the screen and click on next right as soon as you click on next you will see that there is a currently assigned workflow as well which is jira workflow which is default workflow that will be created once you create a scheme but then this rcv jira workflow um, that we created as part of this tutorial we can assign it to particular issue types only say for example i just want to use this workflow for bug epic story and task and rest all can keep using the jira workflow existing workflow i can just select choose um four of those and then i can add those and then I can remove the old one so all um, the, the other the old workflow will be removed 
but what will happen is if you remove the old one all unassigned issue types will by default come to this new workflow as well right so as you can see that all the issue this basically means all the issue types have been allocated to only one workflow because you haven't you don't have any other workflow wherein you can assign all unassigned issue types so now we have assigned all the issue types to rcv jira workflow tutorial um, workflow and which is the scheme uh, rcv workflow tutorial scheme so that's pretty much all about the creating um, the scheme now once the scheme has been created we can go ahead and edit so we'll see the inactive scheme because that is not yet active so rcv workflow tutorial scheme is the scheme so we'll edit it and then we'll try to add another workflow to it all right so we'll say add existing and then we'll say custom workflow and what we'll do is we'll say all unassigned issue types to custom workflow so now you can see rcv jira workflow tutorial um, is having the issue type or the issue type bug epic story and task are using the first workflow and all other issue types in this project will be using rcv custom workflow right so we have a scheme we have two workflow underlying that and then these two workflows have set of issues that will follow that particular workflow now we are almost halfway through the next step into this workflow tutorial is to allocate or to assign this workflow scheme to a particular project now to do that we need to go to the project so i'm going to the project and selecting a project and once you are in the project we will go to the project settings and from project settings you can see the workflow section you can see all the details there and in the left hand side if you click on workflows then in the workflows you can associate a new workflow so at the moment it's using software simplified workflow for project RA and the scheme is software simplified workflow scheme now to change or switch the scheme we can simply say switch scheme and from this theme we can choose our cv workflow tutorial scheme right and associate that scheme to this new project now you will see that as soon as you do that there will be a screen appearing that the current status of the current workflow need to be mapped with the new status in the new workflow because current workflow was different and new workflow is the new workflow that we created so anything in progress we'll just say yes in development because there is no in progress status in the new workflow anything to do remains in open anything done goes to closed anything in progress goes to in development and anything to do goes in um, open right and then we'll associate so please note that once you are in production scenarios and there are lots and lots of issues in your project uh, for which you are associating a new workflow scheme then you need to ensure that you are mapping the statuses correctly from the current status to the new status because it might become really tedious process or task to fix those later manually so bear in mind that you are doing a lot of consultation with the project stakeholders when you are having a live project and migrating the issues to the new workflow and then click on associate so migration will start and all the issues in the uh, project will be appearing for the migration once it's done click on acknowledge and that's it so now you can see that a new workflow rcv workflow tutorial scheme got associated which which has two workflow custom workflow and jira workflow um, which is associated with story bug epic and task and then all others are using the custom workflow so that is um, all about 
how you can associate the workflows that you create with the workflow scheme and then from workflow scheme to the project. Now in the next tutorial we'll test all these steps or uh, whatever we have done for the Jira workflow till now creating work workflow from scratch and then adding conditions validations post functions in further tutorials we'll test all those functionality in this new project hope you like the video thank you for watching hello and welcome to jira workflow tutorial in the last couple of tutorials we have seen to create the jira workflow from scratch then customize the workflow understood about the conditions validators and post functions then we created the workflow scheme, associated the workflow that we created from scratch to the scheme and then associated that scheme to the project. Now in this tutorial, we are going to see how the new workflow that we have associated with, it, with the project might impact the board and how you need to work on the board. So currently, uh, RCV Academy was the project for which we associated the new workflow scheme so we'll choose that particular project and then we'll go to the board right so if you click on the left hand side on the boards you will see the board won't look um, I mean it will be similar board as it was before but if we go to the board section and click on configure then we'll see some of the unmapped statuses from the new workflow right so if we go to the columns now here you can see these were some of the um, already existing column uh, from software simplified workflow which is unavailable at the moment you can see software simplified workflow unavailable this is unable to see to use the software simplified workflow because we have associated a different workflow to this project now the different workflow that we worked or associated has the the statuses like in development open closed in testing etc so we need to map those statuses with the columns here and there is no to do status in the new workflow and that is why you see that this status is not available in any of the workflow used by this board so we need to remove this and to remove this status we just need to drag and drop in the unmapped status and it will disappear right now we need to map the unmapped statuses to the board right so to do is something which is which can be mapped with open as well as reopen right then in development can be in progress and ideally we should be having a column for in testing because that does make sense to have a separate column for in testing and we'll drag and drop in testing to in testing column and then we have done wherein we can map done closed and resolved statuses in the done status so now you can see that we have come up with a new board altogether and mapped all the unmapped statuses from the workflow that we created to the new board, right? So we have created a new column there. And if we go back to the board now, then you can see that you have to do in progress in testing and done. Now let's go ahead and start testing some of the uh, conditions and validators and post functions that we defined in this um, project right so if we try to move a issue from in progress to in testing i can't do that right and why is it not possible so we need to understand that when we define the condition then we define in the condition that a member whosoever is a member of a developer group will be able to move the issue from in progress to testing and no one else can similarly if it is if i choose from to do in progress i can do that but from in progress to in testing i can't even though i am an administrator so if i go 
and see the user management. I'm logged in as administrator and if you see here um, I'm in the Jira internal directory but I'm not part of any of the group which is the developers group. So let's understand, let's see who is part of the developers group. So M Kumar is part of the developers group if you see here. So what we'll do is we'll log in as M Kumar and then go to the same project and try to move the stat, uh, move the issue from development to testing and see if M Kumar can move the issue from uh, one column to other from development to in testing. So let me log off. And I'll log in again. So once I'm logged in, so I'm logged in now as M Kumar, and I'll go to the RCV Academy project. So at the moment, if you see, uh, the current project is RCV Academy project, and I'll try to move the issue from in progress to in testing. Yes, I can. So you see the perforation here. Uh, the green color that means I can move the issue from one column to other right and if you click on this issue now in testing um, it will open the details so let me refresh the page yeah it's still loading so you can see that if I click on the view workflow and we'll see the workflow is the correct workflow that we allocated to so RCV Jira workflow tutorial. That's the workflow we created from scratch. So we, we have defined that from in development to in testing, only a person who is member of the developer group will be able to move and other persons won't be able to move. And this um, basically proves that whatever condition we had mentioned is working perfectly fine. So hope you like the video. In next tutorial, we'll test some of the more uh, validations and post functions that we set up for this uh, workflow. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to Jira workflow tutorial. In this tutorial, we will test the workflow that we created till now. So in last tutorial, we have uh, tested the uh, workflow for the condition that a person needs to be in the developer group to transition an issue from development to in testing. Now in this tutorial we'll see or test that the condition wherein the resolution needs to be set to done once the issue is moved to done state. Right. So at the moment we are into RCV Jira workflow tutorial workflow. Let's view it and see the condition that we define. So we define a condition or uh, we define a post function basically for um, the transition done. So when an issue moves from in testing to done, we define that set the resolution of the issue to be as done, right? So now we are, let's check we are in the correct project. Yes, we are in the RCV Academy project and we are on the board at the moment. Now, if I move this issue from in testing to done so let's first see the resolution of this current issue and the resolution currently says unresolved right now if i move this from in testing to done resolution should automatically be updated to resolved so let's refresh this stat uh, this issue and now you can see the resolution has been automatically set to done and that's what the post functions do so you know like you can define a multiple post function which can update um, various fields in a particular issue automatically and you don't have to worry about um, the field updation once the issue transitions from one state to another state similarly you can update the assignee or the reporter as well um, with the post function so there are lots and lots of possibilities and uh, other add-ons available as well to update the post functions and uh, make your jira workflows really really powerful so that's pretty much all about the jira workflow tutorial series um, so to summarize or to reiterate 
In this tutorial series, we have learned how you can create a workflow from scratch, then how you can edit the workflow different statuses, add a new status, then add the transitions, edit the transitions. Uh, after that, how you can add different conditions, validation, validators and post functions, uh, as well as triggers to the transitions. Um, once you are done and finalized with your workflow, the next step we learned is to how to associate the workflow with the workflow scheme, which in turn will be associated with the particular project. And then we also learn how a particular workflow can be associated to only particular issue type and not all issue type, right? So if you see um, this particular workflow, it's the it's for the story, right? And we had chosen this workflow for only story epic uh, task and bug but if we choose any other um, subtask for example let's see this subtask the workflow for the subtask was different which was the custom workflow right so we have also understood how you can um, associate different workflow to different issue types in the same workflow scheme and then associate that workflow scheme to the project so we also associated we also learn how you can associate the scheme to the project and then eventually how the scheme gets um, activated and workflows get active um, in active state from inactive state post that we learned how you can customize your board for the project and then map the different statuses so if you go to configure there as soon as you link a new workflow then there'll be uh, the all the statuses in the new workflow will be in the unmapped status then we have learned how you can create the new column and map those statuses to uh, as per the new workflow and then we learned or we actually went through and tested this new workflow and different validations and post functions that we configured in this particular workflow. So that's pretty much all about this Jira workflow tutorial series. Hope you liked the whole series. Please do share and subscribe and thank you for watching.